Number 5. Universal Hepatitis C Treatment Classified as a silent epidemic by the CDC, more than 3.2 million Americans are infected with hepatitis C, and as many as 75% are unaware they carry the virus, spreading through contact with blood from an infected person. Hepatitis C is a virus that causes liver inflammation that can result in liver failure or cancer. Currently, there are no vaccines to prevent hepatitis C infection. There are at least six distinct hepatitis C genotypes, or strains, which are genetically different groups of the virus. Until now, treatments were either accompanied by adverse side effects or only effective for certain genotypes of the virus. New combination medications have the ability to treat all six major types of hepatitis C. Results from Phase three clinical trials of a recently approved combination medication showed that 95 to 99% of patients who received the treatment had no virus detected in the blood 12 weeks after finishing the course. The new multi-strain hepatitis C therapy has allowed an effective treatment option for a wider scope of patients, helping clinicians combat this silent epidemic. Hi, this is Akhil Saklecha from Cleveland Clinic Ventures. Today, we're gonna to be talking about number five on our top 10 medical innovations list, universal hepatitis C treatment. And with me today is Dr. Bobby Zervos, Associate Chair, Center for Abdominal Transplantation in Cleveland Clinic, Florida. So Dr. Zervos, we just saw in the video that hepatitis C treatment affects almost 3.2 million people in America. Obviously, that's, that's a big number. It's something that we need to know quite a bit more about and tr therapy for this is critical. What can you tell me about this new therapy? Yes, the direct acting antivirals have been available now since 2014 and they truly have revolutionized uh, liver disease specifically for treatment of hepatitis C. Prior to that, our patients uh, suffered immensely as the previous regimen of medications often had more uh, side effects than actually having the virus itself. And since 2014, not only have the side effects from these medications been virtually non-existent, but we're also seeing success in cure rates of greater than 98, 99%, which over five years ago was completely unthought of and, and not even really thought of that it could be possibly a, a possibility. So how is this different from other treatments that we're using now for hep C? Is this substantially better? Yeah, so there's four different versions of these direct acting antivirals. Uh, each one attacks a different area along the genome of the virus. And so in combination therapy, they're actually successful in not only suppressing the virus, but what is complete eradication of the virus. Where previous treatment, uh, the success rate at best in individuals who did not have cirrhosis was maybe uh, 65 to 75%, and you had to have a certain strain of the virus to have that likelihood of success. Now we're seeing success across the board uh, with all the genotypes, whether there's scar tissue present, uh, no scar tissue present, and again, virtually no side effects uh, with any of these combination medications. Now, it sounds like, you know, you brought up the word genotyping. So it sounds like understanding the, the strain plays a role here. I know that in, in prior uh, treatments, the strain was, was impactful to understand. Is that still the case here? Uh, or with the multiple strain treatment, is, is that something we need to look at at all? So now that we have second and third generations of these direct acting antivirals, the genotype or the strain is completely irrelevant in terms of susceptibility to treatment and eradication rate. Does it matter whether the, the patient is treatment naive or has cirrhosis? So in the past, it was uh, significant to the likelihood of outcomes. Now with these new medications, uh, again, uh, cirrhosis, treatment naive, uh, or experienced uh, really make no difference uh, in terms of uh, treatment success with these medications. So it sounds like really we've taken a lot of the, the factors that were more barriers in, in treatment options and eliminated them with this new type of uh, treatment option. How is it impacting patient lives? Well, it really, like I said, has been uh, revolutionary. You know, I, I'm a transplant physician and many of the patients that we see for transplant uh, come with hepatitis C related uh, cirrhosis and complications. 
including liver cancer. Now with the eradication of the virus, um, it really has opened the doors in terms of what we can do, not only pre-transplant, but more importantly, post-transplant. So with the you know, unfortunate burden of uh, street drugs, there's been a lot of unfortunate uh, donors that have had irreversible damage from anoxic brain injury. And so from the head down, these individuals unfortunately are leaving behind perfectly healthy organs that because of the virus previously we were not able to use for transplant. Now the success rate post-transplant is equally to that in pre-transplant or individuals who don't need transplant. So we're actually able to use organs from donors that are infected with hepatitis C into individuals who have never had hepatitis C, infect them with the virus, and then successfully treat them uh, post-transplant and eradicate the virus. And by doing this, it has allowed us to significantly increase the number of organs available for transplant and potentially you know, decrease the number of individuals waiting on the list and not for liver. We've been able to do this successfully in heart transplant recipients and kidney transplant recipients. Wow, it, it sounds like it's making quite a difference. So I wanna thank you, Dr. Zervos, for taking the time today to discuss universal hepatitis C treatment, which is number five on our top 10 medical innovations list. My pleasure, thank you.